36 years ago this week, a small St. Louis community made headlines nationwide. The federal government told the people living in the tiny town of Times Beach, Missouri, they had to move out. Residents were at risk after a chemical linked to cancer had been spread all over the roads of that town. Tonight, we take a look back at one of the largest exposures to dioxin in United States history. What was life like here once upon a time? Um, it was awesome, wasn't it? Peaceful. We played cards, poker every Saturday night. It was a safe community. Marilyn Leisner was the last mayor of the town of Times Beach, a town that no longer exists. My kids would have lived here and grown up kids and, and had kids here. So it was kind of that everybody was kind of related in the community. Where the town once sat along the banks of the Merrimack River, now sits a state park. This is a small, tight-knit community. Yes, tight -knit. yes. But that tight-knit community turned into a ghost town more than 30 years ago. Drive past the area where Times Beach once stood, and you may not even realize it. It's now Route 66 State Park, just north of I-44 as you pass over the river before Eureka. The town had an interesting start. In 1926, the now defunct newspaper, the St. Louis Times, sold off plots of land in the town for $67.50. The paper advertised the spot as a summer resort getaway, and included in the price for the land was a six-month subscription to the paper. Eventually, the getaway spot grew into a town of thousands. The homes that housed the hundreds of families had a bit of character. Some of the homes were on stilts because the town sat on a floodplain. Had it been for flooding alone, Times Beach would, would be well and happy today and the people would still be here. Yeah. They were determined to come back and rebuild and live here. The town was hit hard by the record flooding in December of 1982 and again in the spring of 83. Did I read that there was really no flood insurance down here? A lot of people didn't have it. It was a few of us that had insurance. But it wasn't the rising floodwaters, but oil that sealed the town's fate. Ten years before the flooding, Times Beach hired Russell Bliss to spray its dirt roads with an oil mixture in order to keep dust down. Little did they know, Bliss had also been contracted to dispose of chemical waste filled with dioxin. And I had no idea, absolutely no idea at all, what was in it. Dioxins are highly toxic. They're found in the chemical known as Agent Orange. They can cause reproductive and developmental problems, damage the immune system, interfere with hormones, and even cause cancer. Bliss took the dioxin and mixed it with used motor oil. That oil was used to spray down the roads in 28 spots across the St. Louis area in the 1970s, the largest place, Times Beach. Well, the areas where you see the equipment are areas where they didn't find. It was main, mainly on the streets and in the ditches along the streets. In November of 1982, it took a reporter spotting a classified report at the EPA to discover the town was on a list of places sprayed with oil contaminated with dioxin. After the floodwaters receded in December, right before Christmas, those who had not returned after the flood were told to stay away, and those who had returned were told to leave. And 36 years ago, on February 22, 1983, the EPA announced the federal government would spend tens of millions of dollars to buy out the residents of Times Beach and dispose of the toxic chemical covering its roads and contaminating its homes. Even with news of the dioxin, at first residents refused to leave and packed town halls with angry residents dominating the local news. The only advice they can give is that there is a health hazard in Times Beach and that Times Beach residents should sell out and move out as soon as possible. The Times Beach folks I've been talking with are just as firm on another matter. They say no matter who tells them to move out, they're not going to. It took years, but eventually all of the town's population moved away. Did they start taking homes out of here and no. burying them before? And no. They waited until no. the last person was out? They waited until everybody was gone. The cleanup took two years, and when it was finished in 1997, had cost close to $200 million. Buried here is the, actually the city of Times Beach. All the homes, all the equipment that they owned, uh, everything is right there. Harold Goodman was a town official with Leisner in the 80s. You can see that it's just a big, long grave. So that burial ground for the homes and equipment, that didn't, they, they didn't excavate until the 90s. Right. So well after the EPA Every, yes. had ordered everybody out. As we spoke next to the long grave, both Goodman and Leisner agreed if they could, the residents of Times Beach would try to resurrect the town. If they were told they could come back, there'd be a line at the bridge. Uh, there are those people that just wanted to go away. They never want to hear of it again. 
But after cleanup was done in 1997, the land was turned over to the Missouri Department of Natural Resources and is now the home of Route 66 State Park. So federal government says don't dig. It's not safe to dig here. No one spend the night here. Does it make sense to you that they're, they've turned this into a state park and there um, are playground areas for children? I question some of the people at the DNR. As to, I wasn't there when they made that decision, but there was nothing else that they could do with it except let it sit barren. So they, they made it safe enough for people to come and go. The man behind the contaminated oil, Russell Bliss, was never charged with a crime due to looser environmental laws of the 1970s. Marilyn, let me ask you this. If not for the waste oil being put down and containing the oxen, would Times Beach still be a thriving community today in 2019? It would be alive and well and happy today. Russell Bliss did go to prison for a year for tax fraud. He didn't report his waste hauling income to the IRS. Missouri's Department of Natural Resources says the no digging law was put in place during the park planning stage because of safety concerns over the buried dioxin. The law banning overnight stays was enacted due to safety concerns related to the park's location in a floodplain.